today I'm going to show you how to make this sculpted crystal necklace. Now let me pick it up so you can see it against my skin. It is just doesn't do it justice here on even the video. The photographs don't either. It's really very pretty. It maintains its shape regardless of whether you lay it down, pick it up, whatever. It is, um, it is basically sculpted with the crystal. So this necklace is made to be a collar necklace. It is made to fit at the collarbone level and this laying at the base of the throat. The way you're going to make sure and ensure that you have the right shape and it lays on your neck properly is by the amount of chain you cut and put on the back of your necklace. If you're a very small person, you're going to want to make sure that the entire necklace, including your chain, is going to measure 16 inches so that it lays properly on your throat. If you're medium size, you will not want it to be smaller than 18 inches. You will make yours 18 inches. If you are a large person, 20 inches. And you just want to make sure that it lays properly on your throat by adjusting the amount of chain. I designed this originally with the component that I made with this bracelet on my beginner's channel. Now, I was going to make one match this, and obviously I did not, so I'm putting it on this channel. I will continue using this component, and I will make several more videos for matching pieces. One for this, and a few for this. Um, so I will continue using this component, and I will continue making several different pieces. Today, I am going to show you this fancier piece. So, let's go ahead and look at the... Um, materialist for today. Okay, for this project today we, we will be using 8O, 11O, and 15O seed beads. These are all Toho. This is a metallic bronze. These two are galvanized aluminum permanent finish Tohos. So, in the silver tone. So, this 11O and this 15O are both the same bead, just in different sizes. Then you will need some bicone crystals. These are 4 millimeter Swarovski. This is a Siam. This is a clear. You will need 17 of, the, of one color. So whatever your accent color is going to be, you will need 17 of. Whatever your embellishment color for the outside of the necklace is going to be, you will need 48 of. So 48 of one color, 17 of another. And then you will need a drop crystal that's top drilled. So you don't want the hole to be vertical through the bead. You want it to be through the top of the bead. I'll show you. So it's horizontal and it's drilled right here, not down the center. This is a Swarovski. It is 15 millimeters long and um, 8 millimeters wide. You can use several different sizes. It doesn't necessarily have to be the size. It just needs to be top drilled. Then you will need some wire guardians. And I have two of those. If you do not know what a wire guardian looks like, I'll zoom in so you can see it after I drop it. Here we go. That's what a wire guardian looks like. You just sew up through it to protect your thread. And we will be using those on the ends of our necklace so we can connect our chain. So two of those. And then a piece of chain. Now you're going to want at least 8 to 12 inches of chain. Now if you don't have just a plain piece of chain like this, if you happen to have a full chain necklace like I do, I bought my chain and... Um, I didn't realize that it was actually already clasped, which is fine for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off the center area and use the two ends on my necklace. So that will include my clasping. However, if you do not have a full chain like this, you just need a segment of chain and then you will need four small jump rings, one larger jump ring, and a spring ring or lobster claw clasp. And so let me get you close so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm using three millimeter um, jump rings and you'll need four of those if you do not already have your clasping. And then a clasp like a spring ring or a lobster claw. 
and then a larger jump ring to hook your clasp into to wire guardians also. You will need a size 12 beading needle because we are using 15 0 seed beads. A size 12 will pass through easier. I'm using 10 pound nano fill. You can also use 8 pound or 6 pound fire line. You can also use 8 pound nano fill. So then to manipulate your chain and your jump rings, you will need two pairs of pliers, a chain nose and a flat nose is what I'm going to use. So let's go ahead and get started with this okay, project. To start this project, you're going to need your 8 and 11 seed beads. You're going to pick up onto your needle six 8 seed beads and bring them down to the end of your thread, leaving enough tail to extend. So I'm going to leave about four inches, maybe a little more than that, just to make sure that I have enough to extend my fire my fire line or nano fill. And then I'm going to go through the first 8 on my tail side and pull these beads into a circle by pulling my working thread. Like so. Now I am going to sew back through all of these beads. Just put your thumb and your finger together and hold your beads so that you can pull your thread through. <clears throat> when you get all the way around, go into the bead right past where your tail and your working thread meet. Right here. Pull your tail and your working thread and this is what you should have. Your tail coming out and your working thread coming out opposite directions in the same bead. <clears throat> then we are going to pick up 11 O seed beads and place them between each 8 O seed bead. So I've got an 11 O and I'm going to go into the next 8 O seed bead <clears throat> in the direction my thread is coming out and pull. I'm going to pop this 11 O down between the 8 O seed beads. And then again, I'm coming out of an 8-0. I'm going to pick up an 11-0 and go into the next 8-0 seed bead. Like so. Hold on to your beads with your thumb and your fingers and pull. That should slide down in between the 8-0s. And again, we're going to do this all the way around, going into the next 8-0 after picking up an 11-0 seed bead. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and sliding the 11 into the next 8 I apologize, my throat doesn't seem to want to cooperate the, at the moment. <clears throat> and then we will go into the next 8 again. Move your tail out of the way and go into the last 8 as you go through, skip the 11 o that's sticking up and go into the next 8 o also, like so. <clears throat> and pull. And this is what you should have. Now, we're going to skip this 11 o go into the next 8 o here. And then we will pick up a 15 O seed bead and a bicone crystal. And I'm going to use my red ones for my embellishment on top of my units. So I'll pick up a 15 O, a red bicone, and a 15 O. I'm coming out of this 8 O seed bead. I'm going to find the 8 O directly across from it and go into the same side I'm coming out of. So I'm coming out of this side, I'm going to go across here and go into this side right here and just through the 8-0. I'm going to get my tail out of the way here and pull this crystal down. Give it a nice little tug like so. And then I'm going to pick up another 15-0. I'm going to go into the bicone crystal and pull my thread through. 
at this point I have a lot of thread so it's going to take me a minute to pull it through <clears throat> and then I'm going to pick up another 15 of seed bead and I'm going to go into the opposite side of the 8 here so it's the same side I'm coming out of this 8 but into the opposite 8 from which I'm coming out and pull this through. At this point it's kind of awkward because the unit is so tiny. As we get working it won't be quite as bad to hold on to. And this is what you should have. Now you're coming out of this 11 o seed bead here. Make sure you give a good tug to make sure your crystals on there tight and you don't see a bunch of thread. And then go ahead and sew through the next 8 o here and then come through the next raised 11 o here and pull. Come back up just a little. Now I will show you, I realize my thumb is over it, but I'm holding it the best I can to retain my tension also. So now I'm coming out of this 11 o seed bead. So we're going to work from here now and we are going to <clears throat> pick up three 11 o seed beads and we're going to go into the opposite side of the 11 o we're coming out of. So we're going to go here and pull a unit of right angle weave down like so. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to sew back through this entire unit to secure it. One bead at a time to retain the shape of our unit. Once you have made all the way around and you're in the bead that you're connected to, then sew all the way up to the outermost bead. <clears throat> Excuse me, geez. And come through that bead. Like so. Now we're going to make our next unit. We're going to pick up six 80 seed beads. Let's see, uh, not seven, six, like so. And we're going to go into the opposite side of the 11 we're coming out of. And this is what you should have. Now, you're going to go into the next 8 -o. So we're coming out of this 11 -o, go into your next 8 -o. Let's see if I can hold this a little better. It's a little awkward for me to hold on to right now. I'm going to go into this 8 -o right here. Pull my thread through, and then I'm going to begin picking up my 11 o seed beads and placing them between my 8 o's, just like I did earlier. So I'm going to pick up an 11 o, and I'm going to go into the next 8 o, and pull, and then again I will pick up an 11 o, go into the next 8 o, and pull. And then again, all the way around the entire unit. Once you are to the point where you're going to put your last 11 in, let's get a little closer so you can see. We're going to go into the next 8 o, bypass this 11 o we're attached to, and then go into the 8 o after that, like so. That will ensure that that bead that we're attached to is in the same position as the other 11 o's, retaining the shape of our unit with the little tucked in look. Now we're going to sew through bypass this 11 o so through this 8 o here. So just ignore the 11 o go into the 8 o 
and only the eight o, like so, and pull. Move your thread to the inside of that bead and pick up an 11 o seed bead, or excuse me, a 15 o seed bead and a bicone crystal and a 15 o seed bead. You're coming out of this side of this 8 o, we're going to go into this side of this 8 o, directly opposite but on the same side, like so, and pull this crystal and 15 o's down. and just arrange it until it lays neatly on top of your unit, like this. Then pick up another 15 O, that's an 11 O, and go into the bicone crystal. Put your thumb over it, hold it nice and tight, and pull, <clears throat> like so. And then pick up one more 15 O seed bead, and then come through the opposite side that you're attached to. So you're attached here. You've got a 15 L coming out on this side. We're going to go into the opposite side, which is the same side you're coming out of this bead on the opposite side of the unit. And pull. Make sure that you pull your thread nice and tight so that there's no thread showing your 15 O's lay pretty on top of your um, unit here. Your crystal is nice and tight and in good position, like so. And then sew through the next 11 O, 8 O, and 11 O. My thread has just tangled and won't let me through. Hold on one second. I'm sorry I have a slip knot. See if I can get this fixed. There we go. And I'm just going to pull my thread through like so. Now we're in position to make our next unit of right angle weave. So we will pick up. I don't know that one. Alexa keeps talking to me though I'm not talking to her. Okay. We're going to pick up three 11 O seed beads, and we're going to go through the opposite side of the 11 O we're coming out of. Then we're going to secure this unit by sewing through it again. So just sew through each bead, like so, one at a time to retain your nice square shape. and then into the bead you're attached to. And now we will sew back up to the sticking out bead in that unit. So go up to, go through this one and go up to the bead that sticks out the most in the direction you are building your units. <clears throat> and we will do one more unit. We'll do one more unit on camera and then we will make several off camera. So go ahead and pick up th six 8 seed beads onto your needle, like so. And then go into the opposite side. Now, you need to go into the next 8 o seed bead. So we're coming out of the 11 o here. We're going to go into this 8 o right there. And we're going to pull. And begin placing your 11 o seed beads between the 8 o's. did not realize how loud my TV was in, until just now. It's in the other room. I promise I will turn that off when we go off camera here. 
I don't know what the movie is, but it's kind of obnoxious. And now I've worked my way all the way around till I'm going until I am going to put in my last 11 ounce seed bead. And then I'm going to go into the next 8 oh skip the 11 oh I'm attached to, and go into the 8 oh after that. And pull. And then I am going to skip this 11 oh and go into the next 8 oh Like so. Pull your thread towards the inside and then pick up a 15 0, a bicone crystal, a 15 0, and go into the same side of the 8 0 on the opposite side of the unit that you're exiting from. Like so. And pull through. Like this. Then just give it a nice little tug, make sure it's secure, pick up a 15 0, go into the bicone, exit, and pull your thread through. Pull that 15 0 secure and pick up another 15 0 seed bead. Then go into the opposite side of the 8 0 that you started in. So on the same side of this 8 you exited from and into the opposite side of the 8 you started in. Straight across. It's the easiest way. Like so. Now, so into the next 11 8 and 11 and exit. Give a nice tug. Make sure your embellishment is nice and tight because if you do not tighten it at this stage, then you will not be able to. So make sure they look good. They're not, the crystals aren't moving around. The 11 O's aren't all, or the uh, 15 O's aren't all funky looking or anything like that. And then make your next unit of right angle weave with your 11 O's. So pick up three 11 O's, go into the opposite side of the 11 O you're coming out of, and then secure that unit and continue making units just like this until you have nine circular units. You will have eight of them completely embellished. On this last unit, we will do the embellishment slightly different and we'll connect to our um, unit a little differently to make our next units. So what we're going to do is I've made my entire unit just like I've made all the others and I'm to the point to where I would normally embellish. I'm coming out of this 8 seed bead that I would normally attach to. However, <clears throat> I'm not going to attach to this 8 seed bead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sew down into this 11 0 right here and attach from this 11 0. So I'm coming out of this 8 0, get you very close so you can see. Let it focus here for a second. So I'm coming out of this 8 0 here. I'm going to sew down into this 11 0, the very central 11 0. So go through this 8 0 that you'd normally attach to. Go through an 11, 11 0, 8 0, and then go through another 8 0, and the next 11 0, and exit. So, counting from the one that you're attached to, not counting the one you're attached to, 1, 2, 3, 4, and you will exit this fourth one. And we're not counting this bead, we're just counting from it. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the one that you're going to then pick up a 15 0 seed bead a bicone crystal, and a 15 O seed bead. You're going to find the 11 O directly across from it. So this one right here, it's the, it will be the 11 O right next to the one you're attached to, right here. And we'll go directly up into that 15 O seed bead. On the same side we're exiting from, so we're exiting here, I'm going to have to come into this side here. See if I can get it. Right like that. And then I will pick up another 
15L come through my crystal, hold on to my crystal and my uh, unit, and then pull that one down, pick up another 15O, go into the opposite side of the 11O I'm exiting from, and pull that one down. Now I'm coming out of this 11O seed bead. I need to sew all the way around and I will attach to this 11O. So instead of going um, straight across now, we're going to be kind of at an angle. So I'll show you what I mean. So normally we would attach to this 11O to keep going straight, but because we don't want to go straight anymore, we're going to create kind of a V. We're going to go into this 11O, the 11O above the one we'd normally come out of. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew into this 8-0. And you can just sew the 8-0s. You don't have to go through the 11-0s. Just make sure that you pull your thread through tight, like so. And then go into the next 8-0. The 11-0 your embellishment is attached to. And then right after the 11 -0 your embellishment is attached to, you're going to go through the 8 -0 and exit the next 11 -0. So we'll go through this 8 -0 and the 11 -0 behind it. So you are attached to this 11 -0 with your embellishment. You're going to exit the one right next to it, right there. And that's where you're going to put in your attachment for your next unit. So you're going to pick up three 11 -0 seed beads and go into the opposite side from which you're exiting here. This is going to position it, the necklace now to where you're actually creating a V shape at, the, at this point. So now sew back through this entire unit. I mean, get arranged here. And sew back through this entire unit again. And then sew up into this 11 0 seed bead that's sticking out the most to start your next unit. Then you will do the same thing you've been doing, even though the 11 is in a different position, you will do exactly the same unit. So you will pick up six 8 -0 seed beads. Nope, that one's funny. Let me get another one. You'll pick up six 8 -0 seed beads and get close again. And I'm going to go into the opposite side of the 11 -0 I'm exiting from, right here. Pull. And then I'm going to go into the next 8 -0. Here. And I'm going to pop my 11 -0 seed beads down into each, in between each 8 -0, just like I've been doing. get positioned here. Okay, and when I come all the way back around, so this is my last 11 -0 seed bead I'm putting in. I'm going to skip the 11 -0 I'm attached to, go into the next 8 -0, and then I will go into the next 11 -0 and 8 -0 and exit that 8 -0. So go into the next 11 -0 and 8 -0. So it would be two 8 -0s over from your attachment 11 -0 that you will begin putting in your crystal embellishments again. So let's give this a nice little tug so it's nice and tight. And then I will do the same thing that I did on the other side. I will pick up a 15-0 uh, seed bead, a crystal, 
a 15 O, and I will go into the opposite 8 O seed bead on the same side I'm exiting from. So here's the opposite 8 O seed bead. I'm exiting from this side. I will go into this side. Same thing I've been doing. The only change is the center unit. After that, it's exactly the same as you were doing before. Now I'm going to go back into the crystal and pull. Pick up a 15 -0. Go back into the 8 I started in on the opposite side from which I started and pull. Tighten up my embellishment and now instead of going into this seed bead here like we did on this corner unit, we're going to sew down to the most central unit. So straight across from the one that we are attached to. So go to this 11 seed bead right here. I'll sew down into this one, 8-0, 11-0, and now you can see if I attach to this 11-0 seed bead right here, it'll be directly across from the 11-0 I'm attached to on the other side, so right there, and I will begin my unit of right angle weave again, and then I will make the rest of my units. So. Three 11 O's go into the opposite side of the 11 O you're in, and then sew around it and secure it. And then you will make um, you will make seven more units. So we have nine on this side. We won't count this center one. We want to do exactly the same thing we've done on the other side. So we need eight units on this side, not counting this one. Eight units. We've already made one, so make seven more units exactly like this one here. If I back off, I won't have to do all this crazy stuff. So make seven more units and we'll be back. Okay, so I made seven more on this side for a total of eight, including the center. Of course, it's nine. So you should have eight on this side, eight on this side, and one in the center. Now I have sewn. I put all my last embellishment in this last unit here, came out of this 8 seed bead and sewed up into this 11 seed bead. Now wherever you're at, if you happen to connect a little differently than me and end up on the other side, just sew until you're coming out of this 11 seed bead. This will be the outside. This is the shape of the V. This will be the outside and it'll be the seed bead right next to where you put your um, embellishment on the 8 -0. so right here. And then <clears throat> we're going to make two little right angled weave connections for our clasping here. So we're going to pick up three 11 -0 seed beads. We're coming out of this 11 -0 right here. Now we are going to go into the opposite side and we're just going to pull through like so. Now we're going to secure this unit of right angle weave. By sewing through all of it. Now at this point, if you have not had to extend your fire line and you have a short piece, you will want to extend it sometime soon. It's best if you can do it when you're doing the 8-0 portion here, putting the 11 O's in between. That way your knot will slide through easy. Just make sure that you have a nice long piece of thread because we're going to start doing some crystal embellishments. So we want to make sure that we have a lot of thread. Now we're going to, we have secured this entire right angle weave unit. Coming out of this 11 0 on the bottom, we're going to go through the 8 0 and the next 11 0 seed bead right here. And this is the 11 0 that you would have normally come up into and started your right angle weave unit for your next round unit. But we're not going to make another round unit, but we are going to go ahead and make another um, right angle weave unit. So you're coming out here. Pick up three 11 0 seed beads and come into the opposite side and pull. Sorry, my thread is tangling. There we go. And then I'm going to reposition this so that I can sew back through this unit and secure it.
And we're going to go ahead and put our wire guardian on this side so it's ready for our clasping before we start the embellishments. So we're coming out of this bottom 11 O seed bead right here. We're going to sew up into this top 11 O seed bead on this unit of right angle weave. So go into the side arm here of your unit and then go into the top. And then we are going to get one of our wire guardians ready and we will pick up an 11 O seed bead first onto our needle. Then we will pick up the wire guardian. <laughs> My fingernails are a little long for this. And then we're going to go through, you can see there's a little opening here. We're going to go through this opening of the wire uh, guardian and bring it down. So this is what you should have. Now turn your wire, wire guardian in towards this unit of right angle weave and go through the other side of the wire guardian. Put your thumb and your finger over it and guide your thread down into the divot on top of the wire guardian like so. And then pick up another 11 O seed bead and come into the top of this unit of right angle weave, the one next to the one we started in, and come in towards uh, to where your needle is pointing towards you, like so. And pull this up. This is what that should look like. Now we have to sew back through and connect this better. So we're going to sew, we're coming out of this bead right here, we're going to sew into this one right here, and I'm going to get you very close so you can see this really well. So now I'm coming through this one. I'm going to pull. Then I'm going to go through the one anchored on the unit here and pull. Then I'm going to go through the inside arm on the unit here and then I'm going to go through the 11 O seed bead I added and then I will go up through the wire guardian like so and I'm going to hold on to my wire guardian guide my thread through like so then I'm going to come into the other side of the wire guardian right here and the 11 O it's attached to now, first I'm just going to go through the wire guardian. Let's see if I can get through both of them. Yep. So I'm going through the wire guardian and the 11 O I added. Here. And then I'm going to anchor this 11 O to this 11 O, the inside arm of this second unit of right angle weave. So I'm going to go into this bead right here and pull my thread through. Then I'm going to go into the um, bead on the unit itself and see as I pull that how that tightens that up. I'm going to move my piece around just so I can get through this again. Now I'm going to go through this side arm here I'm going to go through this bead and the bead that I added here. Then back up through my wire guardian. Sometimes it's better if you go through the wire guardian and the bead at the same time because I've anchored this tightly onto my bead now so I have to kind of squish my way up through there. See if I can get up through there. And I'm going to use a pair of my chain nose pliers, kind of push that up and pull it through. There we go. And now I will sew back into the other side and the 11 O beneath it because you don't want to go through that again. So right there. And then push it through if you need to because those little wire guardians are tight 
you may need to grab your flat nose pliers or chain nose pliers, either one. Got them tangled in my thread. And then I'm going to pull this through. Now I'm going to sew down into this middle bead here. And this side bead, or the bead that is attached to my unit, right here. So this is the one in the circle, my original circle. And I'm going to come through it. Now I want you to see what I'm doing. So after I come through my wire guarding, I came through this 11 out, this 11 out, and then this one in the original circle. Now I'm going to sew up into this 8O seed bead right next to the 11 out I just came through. And I'm going to go through the 11 out on the other side of it too. Right here. Now I'm going to back off a little bit. So as you can see now, we have a very nicely, neatly done clasping that kind of points out. So we can just connect our chain here. And we want this unit to kind of poke out a little bit so that it uh, positions itself the correct way on our neck. Now, we're coming out of this 11 0 seed bead. We are going to start some embellishments. And we want this one to bend out a little bit. So the way that we're going to do this the crystals that we add are going to sculpt the piece into the shape that um, we're going to make for this particular focal piece. So we're going to pick up one of our clear, or I'm going to use my clear four millimeter bicone crystals. And now I am coming out of this 11 O seed bead right here. And I'm going to go into, so I'm going to skip over this unit of right angle weave. I'm going to go into this first 11 0, 8 0, and 11 0 on the top of the next unit. So you're skipping over all of this um, right angle weave unit. You're skipping over the first 8 0. You're going to go into the 11 0, 8 0, 11 0 on the next unit. And you're going to pull this one crystal down tight. Now, as you can see, this sculpts my piece out. Now I want my piece to start bending the other way. So what I'm going to do, make sure you have a nice good tension on that and it'll get better as we put our next few units in. Sometimes that won't be really tight until we get our next ones in. Now we're going to pick up two of our bicone crystals. We're coming out of this 11 0 seed bead right here. We're going to skip over the right angle weave unit. We're going to skip over this 8-0, the right angle weave unit, this 8-0, and go into this 11-0 right here. We're going to go into the 11-0, the 8-0 behind it, and the 11-0 behind it. And we're going to pull these two pieces of crystal together, like so. Just like that. And you can see as soon as you do that, it starts to sculpt the piece. The piece. Then we're going to pick up two more crystal, like so. We're going to do the same thing. Skip over all of this, go into the 11-0, 8-0, central on the next unit, and pull. Make sure there is no slack. When you do this, do it very gently so you don't break your thread, but do it securely. Make sure that you have a really good tension on it, and then pick up two more, and go into the next 11-0, 8-0, central on the next unit, and pull. Make sure it's secure. And then we're going to do one more double unit here. So pick up two crystals and then go into the next set, 11-0, 8-0, in the middle of your next unit, like so. Now we want to bend in like so to make our little sweetheart shape. So what we're going to do 
is, well, it's not exactly a sweetheart shade, but kind of. Now we're going to pick up one crystal and we are going to do the same thing. We are going to go into the next three beads on the next unit. Same three beads, the 11 8 and 11 And we're just gonna place one crystal, like so. And then we're going to do that again. Make sure you have a good tension there and go into the next, pick up one crystal, and go into the next set. And pull tight. And you can see how this is just sculpting my piece into the shape I want it to be in. Now, I'm going to, we're going to change this up just a little bit, because we have to pick up two now, because this space is bigger here from this unit to our central unit. And because of the shape of this one, we have to do it a little bit differently. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up two crystals, like so. Let me get you in close so you can see where I'm going. I'm going to go into this 11 here. So I'm skipping this 8 and going into this 11 and this 8 right here. You can also go into the middle central 11 So 11 8 11 just at a different angle now. And pull these two down. Now we're going to make our center piece here on this unit. So, let me back off a little bit. What we're going to need is to make sure that our embellishment all the way down is nice and tight because this is going to secure it now and if it isn't tight, it's not going to be tight. So make sure it's tight at this point and pick up three 11 seed beads, like so. Then we're coming out of this 11 right here and we're going to go into the opposite side from which we're coming out of and pull these three into a unit of right angle weave, like so. Now I have to sew around this unit and secure it just like we've done all along. Make sure you don't lose any tension as you move your piece around to get to it and just sew through all of these beads. Move stuff away that wants to tangle in my thread here. Now I'm going to go back up into the one that I started in. And then I have to sew down into this bead and come out this most central sticking out bead. So I'm going to go into this side bead here and then down into this bead. Now we are going to make a unit to put our dangle on. So what we have to do is it's kind of like making our original units just a little bit modified. So we're going to get out some 8 seed beads and pick up two of your 8 and then pick up your crystal, your dangle crystal, this one, and go through the top hole of the crystal. Bring this down and then pick up two more 8 seed beads like so and then we're going to go through the opposite side of the 11 right here and pull. Pull this into a circle leave it a little bit loose and then go into your 8 right next to where you're coming out of the 11 Go into that 8 -0. Then pick up an 11 seed bead and go into the next 8 -0. I'm going to try to leave this laying down so that you can see what I'm doing well. Like so. And then pick up, actually kind of pull that tight, and then pick up an 11 -0 and go into the crystal. So you're coming out of the 8 -0, you pick up an 11 -0, you go into the crystal. Now you pick up an 11 -0 and you go into the 8 -0 next to the crystal, right here. And pull. Pull 
then you pick up an 11-0 and go into the 8-0 here. And then I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to skip the 11-0 that I'm coming out of, that I'm connecting to, and I'm going to go directly into the 8-0 on the other side of it and pull. Now I'm going to sew through the 8-0s and the crystal here. So I'm going to skip this 11-0, go into my 8-0, and then go into my crystal like this. Get you close. So I'm just skipping the 11 0 so that I can make a nice tight tucked in unit like the rest of them. Make sure that your thread goes down in between the beads and you can't see it. And then skip this 11 0, go into this 8 0, and then into the 8 0 on the other side of the other 11 0 to skip the two 11 0's with your needle. And pull. Now we're coming out of this 8 0 seed bead here. We're going to go ahead and include the 11 0 this time and go up through it. And then we're going to go into the 8 0, 11 0, and 8 0 on this side. So we're just sewing around it again to secure it and to draw all the beads together. So we're going through the 11 0's this time. back through the crystal into the 11 0 8 0 11 0 up through this 8 0 into the 11 0 we connected to and exit make sure I'm in that 8 0 yes okay so that's what that should look like now you're going to sew into this 11 0 here. We're coming out of the 11 0 on this side. We're going to go up into the side arm. We're going to go into the middle here. And then we're going to go into the 8 0 and the 11 0, right next to where we're coming out of, right there. And exit. Now I'll back my camera off a little and show you where we're at and what it looks like so far and then we'll have to match the other side. So that's what it looks like so far. And again, I've got my bead mat everywhere. Everything's going crazy. Something about this design, I don't know. And then, now we need to do this side. So I'm gonna stay with you to do these embellishments because they change as we go through it. If it was the same one, I would stop the camera and we'd just continue. But now, we're going to match this side. So we are coming out of this 11 0 seed bead. We're going to pick up two four millimeter bicone crystals and we're going to skip over this 8 0, this 11 0, and we're going to go into this 11 0. We're going to skip this 8 0 too. This 11 0, this 8 0, and this 11 0. Right, very central to the crystal on the unit we're going into. Right here. 11 0, 8 0, 11 0 and pull, like so. Now you can see that's balanced both sides. Now we're just going to pick up one crystal and we're going to skip over all of this stuff, go into the 11 -0, 8 -0, and 11 -0 in the middle of the next unit and pull. And again, one crystal and into the next unit. Same beads as we've been going through. Like so. Make sure that your tension is good because like I said, this is what sculpts the shape of your piece. Without tight tension, you're just going to have a big blob. So pick up two this time. And we're going to change the way that the thing is sculpting by adding two beads this time. And we're going to go into the same beads, the 11 8 11 and pull two crystals down. Now, pick up two 
by cones again and go into the next unit. Same beads, 1108010, and pull. Like so. And again, two crystals. Go into the next set here. and pull tightly. Make sure you allow the piece to bend as you do this, but you also want to continually straighten out the piece as you do it too. Don't just let it crumple everywhere. Adjust your tension and adjust the way it looks by touching it, pulling it, patting it down wherever it needs to be. You have to be in command of how it shapes itself. Now you have to pick up two more crystals and go into the next unit. And pull. Make sure you have nice tension, you have a nice curve. Pick up one crystal. Now here, <clears throat> I was going to retain the thread to do our clasping on this side at the very end, but I think we'll, we'll go ahead and do the clasping now and then do the inside embellishments. So we can get rid of this thread if we'd like. I'm just going to cut a little bit, I'll burn it down the rest of the way, but I'm going to pick up one crystal now and I'm going to go into the 1108 and 110 right here. I'm going to cut this thread down more. Let me make sure that this bends out the way I want it to. And now this thread right here, I was going to burn it down, but I'm going to have to work through this bead a lot, so I don't want to block it, so I'm just going to cut that down even more. And then I am going to pick up 3110 seed beads because this 110 we're coming out of right now is the one we're going to work in. However, before we do anything, make sure you have pulled tight. Make sure that this one, it's bowed out and then it's curved out this way. This one crystal should curve this unit out, otherwise it's not going to match the other side and you're not going to have nice tight tension. So pull that through, pick up 3110 seed beads and then go into the opposite side of the 11 that you're coming out of. Of course, we can tighten this up again after we get through it. Right here. Now, before I pull that tight, I'm going to pull on this thread and then pull these down just to make sure that I don't lose any tension in my embellishment. But don't crumple up your embellishment either. Now, go ahead and sew back through this right angle weave that we've just created. Okay. So now we have a full unit of right angle weave right there. We're going to go through this 8 into this 11 and make another unit of right angle weave. So let me get to where I can actually handle my piece and I'm going to go through the 8 and the 11 right there. And I'm going to make another unit of right angle weave with 11 seed beads. So get three 11 seed beads, pick them up, and now we're going to go into the opposite side of this bead. And you're going to sew through it again. Now I have secured that. I'm going to sew all the way up to this top bead right here. So I'm going to go through here, 
through here. Now, get a wire guardian and 211 O seed beads out. And we will attach just like we did on the other side. So let me get you close. Get my stuff straightened out here. Get you a little closer. So now I'm coming out of this 11 0 seed bead. I'm going to pick up an 11 0 and I'm going to pick up my wire guardian. I'm going to go through the bottom of one side of my wadi wadagadan <laughs> wire guardian and pull this down. And then I'm going to go through the other side of the wire guardian, like so. Put my thumb over it, and I'm going to pull my thread slowly, guiding the thread into the divot on the top of the wire guardian. And then I can just pull it down towards my piece. Now it's going to be a little loose until I get the next part anchored, so don't worry about that too much. Pick up another 11 o seed bead. Go into the top bead on this unit of right angle weave. Hold your thumb over it and guide it through nice and gently, like so. Now, sew into the sidearm of the unit you're coming out of right here. And then sew into the bead on the unit that we're attached to right here. And after you go through each one, you can pull it back down tight, so don't worry about it too much. And then up through this side arm here, up through the 11 0 seed bead, and back into the wire guardian, like so. Pull through. Go through the other side of the wire guardian, and the 11 0 seed bead on the other side of it. Right here. Now it feels like you're kind of mangling it, but you can straighten it out as you pull through, so don't worry about it too much. Then go into the bead right next to the one you're, or actually the inside bead here, sorry. So you're coming through this bead, go into this inside arm here. Come through this 11 0 here. Let's see if that's secure enough. That looks pretty secure. And now I am going to go down into this 8 seed bead and into these three 8 11 8 right here. Oh, I hope I was in camera. You can go ahead and sew up through this one more time if you'd like, if you feel like it's not secure enough, but I feel like it's pretty secure and it's going to be fine. So what I'm going to do is go into this 8 here, into this 11 here, Pull that tight, then I'm going to go into the 8 and 11 here on my first unit on the inside of my necklace. So I'm going to back off so you can see where I'm at. I am here. So now we're going to start an embellishment on the inside of the necklace. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pick up two bicone crystals because we want this to kind of bow out like so, so that when we put our chain on it, it'll go nice around our neck. So we're going to pick up two bicone crystals. And we're going to go through the next unit in the same three that we did previously on the outside. The 11 0 8 0 11 0 And we're going to pull down closer so you can see. Now Give that a nice tug, make sure you have good tension on it, and we will then pick up one crystal. And we will go into the next set of 11080110 on the next unit. And this will start to bring your piece in this way or out however you envision it correctly to you but it should have a nice bow towards the outside and then curve in so now pick up one more crystal go into the next set and 
and pull your crystal. Again, the crystal. So let's see, I need one, two, three, one, two, three, four of these. So I'm looking at my original design. Sorry, guys. One more. <clears throat> Pick up a crystal and go into the next. So we all have four single crystals down the side here. Oh, that's a rondelle. Sorry guys, I have to take that out. I don't know. I must have got mixed in my little crystal bottle. I apologize. Let me fix that. I'll be okay. back. Okay, problem solved. Now I'm going to put my fourth single crystal in between the units here. Now, I'm going to, as I pull and do my tension and all that stuff, I'm going to arrange my piece, making sure that I maintain a really nice shape. Otherwise, you're just going to have whatever you end up with. And you don't have to. You can arrange it. So, this is what we have. Two and then four single crystals. Now, after this fourth single, we're going to put two crystals so that we can bring a bow up this way. So now we're going to pick up two crystals and we're going to go into the next unit here and pull tight. Make sure that you have good tension and then pick up two more crystals. Go into your next unit here, 11080110, and pull. Now this one is going to be a little bit different. We are going to pick up one crystal, and I'm going to zoom you in very closely. You can see I'm coming out of this 110 seed bead. You can see there's an 110 seed bead central right where we connected this crystal on this round unit here. We're going to go into that 110 seed bead and only that 110 seed bead. So go directly into that one and pull like so. Make sure that your tension is good but you're not crumpling your piece. Now pick up one more and we're going to work our way back up the other side. So, I'm coming out at this central 11 -0. I'm going to go up into this 11 -0, 8 -0, and 11 -0, right above the crystal on this first unit. And pull. <clears throat> Straighten everything out. Pull your tension. Make sure you've got your piece laying how you want it as you do this because like I said this is what's going to determine how this piece is going to look on your neck. So let me show you what we've got. And now we are going to do the exact same thing on this side. So follow the patterning. Here are two crystals. Here are two crystals. Here are one crystal, one crystal, one crystal, one crystal, and then here are two crystals. So just follow exactly what you did on this side, and when we get to the end here, we will be back. And here you have it. I've done this entire other side. You can see how uh, symmetrical it is. Now I'm coming out up here, and I'm just going to tie my thread off, and then we'll add some chain on either side, and we'll call this finished. So I'm coming out right here, and I am just going to sew up into this next 11-0 or I'm coming out of the 11 -0 from my embellishment. I'm going to sew into this 8 -0 right behind it. And I'm skipping the 11 -0 in between and I'm going into the next 8 -0 and I'm just going to pull tight. And then again I'm going to skip this 11 -0 here, go into the next 8 -0. You can sew through them too if you'd like, it's just that they're getting kind of tight. And our original thread went through just the 8 -0, so it's okay to do that on this particular design. 
like so. Now I'm going to grab a knot right between this crystal and this. Um, make sure your embellishment on the other side is tied, of course. And then I'm going to make a knot right between this crystal and this 11 0 and pull it down between the beads. Then I'm just going to sew through this crystal and the 11 0 8 0 11 0 and I'm just going to go few, through several beads here. Just sew down and right here I'm going to exit out towards the back of my necklace here and I'm going to turn my necklace over and I'm going to cut my thread Maybe a little shorter than that. I don't want a big blob on there. And grab a lighter and I'm going to burn this tag down so that it just rolls up on these seed beads here. Like so. And my woven part is finished. Now, what I have done is I have taken the chain that I showed you that I had they looked like, let me get this back here, they looked like this. What I did was I measured how much I needed from this, the clasping down. And I decided, actually I'm not including the clasping, I'm including the jump ring that the chain is on and not the clasp. And I measured two pieces exactly the same length and they're about four and a half inches long. Then I'm going to grab a tiny little jump ring. Now, if your chain is big enough, you can open one of the links and just put it right onto your piece. My chain happens to be pretty small. I could probably get away with doing it, but it's going to be hard. So I've got these little three millimeter jump rings and I'm just going to open the jump rings, put them on the chain, and then put them onto my piece. Now my chain already has the clasping on it, as I said. If yours does not, then just include a jump ring and either a lobster claw clasp, a spring ring clasp, whatever you would like, and a loop on one side. So a hoop on one side, a closed jump ring, and your clasp on the other side, and then connect the other end to your necklace. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to open up my jump ring here. These jump rings aren't cut the best, so I'm going to have to mess with them later. But just for the sake of showing you, I'm going to go ahead and put this on my chain. And then I'm going to put it onto my wire guardian. And then I'm going to close the loop, or the jump ring, excuse me nice and tightly and there's one side I'm going to go ahead and do the other side and then we'll be back and like I said if you just have um, chain that doesn't have your clasping on it go ahead and put that on too and we'll be back as soon as we finish doing that part okay so this is what it looks like now with the measurement that I have made with my chain, this is an 18 inch necklace. That means that this should lay just right at or right beneath your collarbone and this right at or right beneath your throat um, where it divots in uh, on the collarbone. So right at the um, base of your throat is where this part should be and this kind of below it. And this collarbone length, so that's 
how it fits best. Now, if you want it to lay lower on your chest and be in this shape instead of this shape, that's fine too. You can make your chain longer. So the whole way you're going to judge where it lays on your neck and how it lays on your neck is with your chain and how long or short you make it. For me, this is 18 inches and that's just perfect for a collar type of necklace where it's just right at or right below my collarbone and that's right where I want it so that it lays right at the base of my throat. That's how this is supposed to lay so that you have a really pretty framing of your throat. Anyway, that's what this looks like. Turned out really pretty, lays really nicely on the neck, works very well, and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. See you later.